Hello there friends, it's Cassie and welcome back for another video here on my YouTube channel. Today I am joining Crafty Meraki for a video hop. So let's talk about what we're using. I've got the Meraki Moments Hugs stamp set and I also have the die set that goes along with it. It also has a foiling plate in there. I love that we are going to be using that. Uh, and I'm excited about this because I've never used their stamps or their dies before. So I'm, I'm excited to jump in there with these. We also have our Meraki Moments Hay die set. I think it's great because it has not only the words, it has a shadow and then another shadow for it. And then this last one is the Meraki Artisan Floral Wreath die. And it is absolutely beautiful. So we're going to be using that as well. But before we get started on all of those products, we're going to make some background. So I've doubled up my video here, otherwise we'd be here all day. To start out, I have brought in two different Distress Oxide colors. This is Lost Shadow and Pumice Stone, and I put those right onto a craft mat because those are, at least I have found, better than using the glass mat. It, it, they both do different things. You can do it on a glass mat, but I like the beading that this gives. And all I'm doing is pouncing that in that color and then drying it in between. And I'm doing different layers. The next thing I did was bring in some Pumice Stone Distress Spray Stain. Now this stuff is much darker. Uh, the pigment is brighter, and that's also because we are using a spray stain, and the oxides tend to be a little bit more chalky and a little bit more subdued. So I'm pouncing both of those backgrounds into that, drying in between and pouncing back in. I love all of the texture that it gives when you do this. And I haven't done this in a minute, so I'm excited for how these backgrounds are going to turn out. Finally, I am bringing in my Distress Ink Cube. This is the pumice stone one again, and I am going to bring in a blending brush and then just blend that color all around the edges and into the center just to kind of take some of that white space away. I love how the textured these backgrounds end up turning out. They're just so fun from what you start with to what you end up with. It's, it's just really fun. And uh, so once I'm done with that, I'll clean off that background a little bit and then I'm going to bring in my Distress Sprayer and I'm just going to slowly try and get some big beads of water on those. Let that sit for about 30 seconds, bring in a um, microfiber towel, wipe that up, and then also dry these because I want to make sure those are nice and dry before I do anything else with those backgrounds. So there they are. They're all done. We're going to set those off to the side and we're going to start working on our die cuts. To save a little time, I die cut everything out Everything actually got die cut twice, except there was one, this flower in particular, that got die cut three times, or four times, uh, because I just loved it. So I'm bringing in some different colors, and we're only going to stick to one color for the flowers. That color is the Seedless Preserves, and I'm using my Blending Buddy to bring those in, and now I am assembling the flower. I'm not going to show you the assembly of all the flowers. The packaging does a, an amazing job of showing you how they all go together, and I just like to put a dab of glue in there so I can move those petals around a little bit if I want to, and then I'm, the other two colors that I'm bringing in for these flowers are Crushed Olive and Abandoned Coral. And that's going to be the same for all of the flowers. We're going to have either both the crushed olive and the abandoned coral, or maybe just the crushed olive, or maybe just the abandoned coral. And then we'll put all those together. I wanted to stick to this color palette. I didn't want to go too crazy with the colors of the flowers, but look at how that turns out. It's all dimensional, and I think that's just fabulous. I die cut out the leaves twice, so we have four total, and I'll use those on the inside and the outside of the card. Next up, after everything has been assembled, I'm going to bring in my Glimmer Hot Foil system, and I'm going to cut down some rose gold hot foil, and I'm kind of just measuring here on my quick trimmer so I can trim down this foil for the hugs die, or the hugs uh, hot foil plate. So I feel like one goes with the other. If you get the, the Meraki Moments Hugs stamp, you're going to probably want the die set and foil set that goes along with it. And then, like I said, just trimming that down. And then I'm going to build my little sandwich so I will have my white cardstock pretty side up with the foil and then stick my plate right on top of that. And then I like to take some mint tape and hold everything in place and then flip it upside down onto the Glimmer Hot Foil system so that that plate is directly on the heat. When the green light goes on, it's ready to press the button. 
in the meantime, while that was heating up, I went ahead and die cut out the hay and I am going to just bring my ink cubes in and directly put those right on to the letters. It will leave a little bit of a white halo, which I actually don't mind. I feel like that gives it a little bit more of a distressed look considering I made the distressed backgrounds the way that I did. So I like the way that that turned out. And then for the middle layer, I did that in some white, but I decide I'm gonna use that pumice stone right on there. In the meantime, you'll have noticed that my plate is ready to go. The, the green button has stopped flashing. So now I can run this through my die cutting machine and then I will peel the plate away after everything has been run through. And that turned out pretty good. So now we're gonna assemble the hay. I'm using some reverse tweezers along with a little bit of glue. And the pumice stone is just slightly behind it. I really think that looks so good. It's just like a tiny bit of it um, peeking back in that background. And we'll do the same thing for each of those letters. And then for that final layer, the final shadow layer, I just die cut that out of some white. And I'm going to attach the whole thing right down on top of that. You could stick to the one top layer you could do just the two layers, but I think I like all three together. Once that is all assembled, I'm going to bring in the hugs die. And we're going to tack that down with a little bit of mint tape and run that through our die cutting machine. And then we'll have all the pieces ready for us to start assembling these cards. So there are those backgrounds again, just deciding which ones I want where. And then I had a little bit of fun playing around with where I might want things and, and how things would be placed. And I ended up deciding, and we used everything, I'll tell you that, we used everything. Uh, I decided on, you'll see how these end up turning out. I put the, those leaves on the bottom and then I decided to use some adhesive foam strips on the back of the hugs. These particular adhesive foam strips don't have any adhesive on them. <laughs> on the one side, it's just on, it's only on one side. So I'm using glue to adhere these down to the front. And then I will glue this one right up above it. So now we have birthday hugs. I just think that looks so fun. And it, it's popped up, so there's extra dimension. I'll glue down this upper leaf there's a lot of possibilities with these flowers and the stems and the leaves and stuff. Uh, I just thought this would look kind of fun to leave it more on that left hand side, but I've seen so many great examples done with this. For this front, I'm going to go ahead and glue down the hay rather than using some foam tape. And then I'm going to start kind of playing around with the assembly of these flowers and we'll just start gluing those down. I end up keeping two flowers out because those two flowers are gonna go on the inside of each of those cards. But I do trim this one down. This one is four inches by five and a half inches, so there will be a white border on the right-hand side. And then the one for hay, I did trim all the way around that, so it's gonna have a white border all the way around it. So that one's four inches by five and a quarter. And we're just gonna glue these flowers down. If you want an extra dimension, obviously, you could use some foam tape. But I'm gonna leave that just as it is. You could even bring in some embellishments if you wanted to. I want to let these flowers speak for themselves though. So for this final one, I'm just going to glue down all of these flowers. And I just, I love how that turned out and that purple with the gray background and those little pops of the abandoned coral with the crushed olive, it just makes me happy. And then the rose gold that I used for the foiling for the word hugs was nice too. And then we're going to get our card bases ready to go. The card bases, bases both measure five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and they are scored at four and a quarter. Like I said, this one's going to have a white border all the way around the entire edge. And then this last one is just going to have a white border on the right hand side. So we're going to push that all the way to the left. I love that. And then we have some leftover strips that we trimmed down, or when we trimmed down our, our backgrounds. So I'm gonna put those on the inside of our cards. 
I like to do this, just add some of that outside to the inside. And like I said, I have two flowers and two stems. So we're going to put a stem on each one. And I do apologize. My cat is hungry right now. You know, that's why he keeps walking across the, the camera. Ugh. And he will not be ignored. That is Miles. So I'm going to have to to finish up these cards and feed him. <laughs> so there you have it. I really love how these turned out. Like I said, this is a part of a video hop. I'm gonna have all the information down below in the description box. So be sure to head on down there so that you can continue hopping along. If you like this video, hit that like button and definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.